Hello guys, welcome to my turn. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the anatomy of the duodenal recesses. So what are duodenal recesses? So in the region of the duodenal jejunal function, duodenal jejunal flexure, small pocket like, small pocket like peritoneal folds are present. Peritoneal folds are present they are known as the duodenal recesses so these are sometimes responsible for the strangulation of retroperitoneal hernia they are responsible for the strangulated retroperitoneal retroperitoneal hernias so duodenal recesses are nothing but as they are the Duodenal, uh, they are be situated behind the duodenal jejunal flexure which are small pocket like peritoneal folds known as the duodenal recesses so how many duodenal recesses we have we have totally five recesses one is called as the superior superior duodenal recess second one is the inferior duodenal recess then we have something called as the paraduodenal recess paraduodenal recess then we have something called as retroduodenal recess retroduodenal recess and also uh, mesentero parietal recess mesentero parietal recess so these are the five recesses that we have the superior duodenal recess, inferior duodenal recess, paraduodenal recess, retroduodenal recess and lastly the mesenteral parietal recess. So what are these recesses? They are nothing but as a small pocket like peritoneal folds which are situated behind the duodenal jejunal flexure and they may sometimes lead to strangulated retroperitoneal hernias. We will draw the duodenum and look into the recesses. So we have the duodenum here right. First part, second part, third part and the fourth part. So this is the duodenum. So just above the duodenum, above the duodenum jejunal flexure, we have a recess called as the superior recess. And just below the superior recess, we have the inferior recess. This is the superior, superior duodenal recess. And this is the inferior duodenal recess. And also, just below the inferior uh, duodenal recess, below the uh, what is called as the inferior mesenteric vein. We have the mesenteric vein somewhere here. Just below the inferior mesenteric vein, we have one more recess. This is called as the paraduodenal. Paraduodenal recess. Below the, this is the inferior mesenteric vein. Paraduodenal recess. Then we have the behind the duodenum. That is called as the retroduodenal recess. This is the retro duodenal recess and also we have discussed one more thing right that is the mesenteroparietal recess that is situated behind the these are the superior mesenteric artery and also the superior mesenteric vein superior mesenteric artery smv and also the superior mesenteric vein just below the superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein we have one more recess here that is called as the mesenteroparietal mesentero parietal recess so this is the mesentero parietal recess now let's discuss about them so what do you know about the superior duodenal recess it lies uh, to the left upper end of the fourth part of the uh, fourth part of the duodenum it lies to the left upper end of the fourth part of the duodenum behind the superior duodenal jejunal peritoneal fold with its mouth looking downward and then what about the inferior duodenal recess it lies a little below the superior recess right behind the inferior duodenal jejunal peritoneal fold and also they have the paraduodenal recess it is lowest when it is present the lowest if it is present it is the lowest it lies to the left of the fourth part of the duodenum behind the paraduodenal fold of the peritoneum and the paraduodenal fold contains the inferior mesenteric vein in its free border then we have the retroduodenal recess. It is the largest duodenal recess, but it is rarely present. We have the retroduodenal recess, but it is rarely present. Rare. 
and then it if it is present it lies behind the third and the fourth parts of the duodenum its orifice looks downward and to the left and also the coming to the incidence of duodenal recesses the superior duodenal recess will be present in about 50 percent of cases then in the inferior duodenal recess it will be present in about 75 percent of cases in paraduodenal recess we have up to 20 percent of cases and retroduodenal it will vary up to some 5 to 10 percent only and also we have also discussed about the mesenteroparietal research light it is found only in about one percent of the individuals so it lies below the duodenum behind the upper part of the mesentery the superior mesenteric vessels lie in the anterior wall of the opening anterior wall of the opening of the mesenteroparietal research the superior mesenteric vessels superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric vein will lie so this is about the complete anatomy of the duodenal recesses now let's look at the suspensory muscle of the duodenum Coming to the suspensory muscle of the suspensory muscle of duodenum. So, what is suspensory muscle of the duodenum? It is also called as the ligament of trades. Ligament of trades. So, the it is a fibromuscular band. It is a fibromuscular band which suspends from the which suspends the duodenal jejunal flexure from the right crust of the diaphragm we have the right crust of the diaphragm here and then we have the duodenum here this is the duodenal jejunal flexure so it suspends from the right crust of the diaphragm to the duodenal jejunal flexure so it is a fibromuscular band which suspends from the this is the right crust of the diaphragm right cusp of the diaphragm to the uh, duodenal jejunal flexure duodenal jejunal flexure which suspends from the right cusp of the diaphragm to the duodenal jejunal flexure so um, what are the uh, this band contains striated muscle fibers in the upper part in the upper part it contains striated muscle fibers and in the middle part it contains elastic fibers elastic fibers and in the lower part of it contains the uh, non striated muscle fibers non striated which are nothing but the smooth muscles so lower part it contains the non striated muscle fibers middle part it contains elastic fibers and upper part of it contains striated muscle fibers so what is the function of the ligament this ligament so the ligament of threads fixes the duodenal jejunal flexure and prevents it from being dragged down by the weight of the loops of small intestine due to small intestine it will prevent its uh, weighing dragging down so it will strongly adhere to the duodenal jejunal flexure it also serves as, serve as an important landmark in the radiological diagnosis in the radiological diagnosis it uh, supports as an important landmark because of incomplete rotation or mal rotation of the small intestine due to incomplete incomplete rotation or uh, mal rotation of the mal rotation of the small intestine it also provides a radiological uh, or a radiological important landmark so sometimes the ligament of threads may kink the duodenal jejunal flexure and cause partial intestinal obstruction it may also kink the duodenal jejunal flexure and cause partial obstruction and also the ligament of threads if it is short the ligament will be o shaped commonly it is shape shaped if it is so much short the duodenum will attach like this and becomes o shaped and if the long duodenum and if it is so much long the duodenum will look like j shaped if it is so much long it will look like a j shaped so commonly three shapes are present c shaped o shaped and the l j shaped and l shaped of the duodenum so this is about the suspensory muscle of the duodenum called as ligament of threads if you like the video make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also share it to your other friends and people thank you so much